Okay, hi folks. Uh, I had a question from a user uh, today, and uh, the question is posted here, uh, but it's actually two parts. So I'm going to combine. I'm going to combine them into a single video video segment. I was going to refer him to uh, uh, some of the posted videos where I couldn't find it, so it was easier for me to actually make it. The situation is this: this person wants to make a, a bar like that and uh, apply some kind of a pressure on a region here instead of the entire face and apply some kind of a concentrated force uh, or some force at a location which is uh, uh, some arbitrary location on, on that top face also the second part of the question is how do i create a simply supported uh, uh, simply supported restraint at the, the two ends well, that can be done in several different ways, but uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it hard and create a virtual part associated with this face and the back face, and then put it on some kind of a pivot uh, uh, restraint. Okay, so the, 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 the more, uh, the more uh, complicated problem is how do you apply a pressure on a face here, not the entire face, but the patch and a point. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, start my uh, Katia uh, let's see, new part. I'm doing this thing on V5 R21, but the, even if you look at the most recent version, which is 15 years later than this, uh, the same thing will, will, will be true. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, actually, uh, let, me, uh, let me see now. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Let me change the, the back. Windows background, tools, options. This is hurting my eyes, so let's go back to the standard uh, uh, color. Okay, so dimensions are not important because this process, I'm going to show it to you, the issue is not accuracy, the issue is not uh, you know, checking against uh, something, it's just that the process, how it works. So on that face, I'm going to sketch a rectangle. Except that so that I can, uh, I don't lose track of uh, what I'm doing. I'm going to make this thing two inches. Or two inches. Okay. Good. Exit. And then I'm going to pad it uh, by two inches, 10 inches in each direction. So uh, mirror extent, 10 inches. Good. Okay. Uh, why don't we apply some kind of a material on it? So aluminum, for example, on that piece. Okay. Now, since I would like to apply a concentrated for the some location here, I'm going to create a point on that face, and you will see that that point is going to be used later on. This is to ensure that the 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 uh, the mesh that I create has this point. This point as a node. Okay, so let's create a point on that face uh, right there. So I created a point there. I'm going to put my for concentrated force later at this location. Of course, if this has a particular coordinate, you have to uh, uh, you know decide on what it is and you put it yourself. Now on that face, I will sketch a circle. Pretend that uh, I'm going to make the patch circular. Or any other shape, it really doesn't matter. But I make a circle. Exit. Now, what I like to do is uh, I want to put a surface on this face, uh, on this uh, circle. So I go to generative shape design and fill F I L L this curve. So a surface. Let's try it again. Let me let me uh something's already selected. Oh I see it's already selected. That's okay. So okay. Good. So notice that uh, I put a surface there. Now I have to sew the surface into that top face. But basically I'm I'm trying to create a feature there. Some of you might say, well, can I make a little pocket there, which is an epsilon, you know, uh, a thick. That's other ways of doing it. There are other ways of doing it. It's not the only way. 
So what I did, I create the surface up there. So now I go back to generative, uh, uh, back to uh, part, part design, and look for sewing that surface. There we are, you see that? It's called, uh, I don't know, surface something. Uh, right there. So, so, so surface. You click on it. You go and select that face that you created, that uh, that fill that you created. Make sure the arrow is down, and uh, do not uh, uncheck the simplified geometry. Uncheck the simplified geometry. Okay. Say okay. Good. All right. Now we're going to mesh it. Except that you have to go to the advanced meshing tools. Say okay. Get your solid elements right there. See octo. Octree tetrahedral measure. On that uh, part, uh, I make this thing 0.2. That was the reason I put some dimensions there. And I'm going to make it linear because, uh, you know, it's, I don't want it to sit to, to take a long time to run. And then local, under local, notice that there is uh, there is an option here that says impose point. You select the impose point and you say add. And then you go and select that point that you created on that surface. Make sure it's on that surface. Because it's off that surface, you just created it by coordinates, then you have to project it down into that surface. I created it on that face. That's why there's no problem. Good. And uh, when, I, when I mesh, because I sold this to the surface, it's going to take that circle into consideration, and obviously, because of what I just did, it puts a, uh, a note at this location. For example, let's check it. Uh, apply. Okay, good. So let's see. You can see that, first of all, that point right there, see that? That point that I created right there, that green dot, is a note. You can put a note here, okay? And if you look at the circle that I uh, created and sold it, it better have taken that into account. And you can see that actually, uh, let me hide this. You see that? The, the elements, the elements are, have nodes on that surface. So this is taken into consideration. In fact, if I hide that, uh, uh, surface, oops, undo. Okay, can I uh, hide this? That surface, is that the surface? No. Is it? Or maybe, maybe I hope it did, but it doesn't look like it. Maybe it did. Let me bring that thing into the show mode. Where was it? It was uh, fill, right? It was a uh, fill. Yeah, you can see that the nodes of these elements are all on that. Okay, there. See, this is respected. This circle is respected. It's just that kind of it's kind of awkward when I hide it. You don't get that notion. Let me see. Let me see. This is a circle. When I hide that fill, yeah, it's right there. There's the circle. You see that? Right there. Excellent. So let's get out of this. Go to uh, uh, generative structure analysis. If you say right click uh, mesh visualization, you can see it here. There is my circle over there. There's the point. Okay, so deactivate this mesh because you want to apply the loads and things like that. Okay, where's my part? Uh, my part is uh, hiding, so uh, where is it? Okay, good. All right, so now let's put a pressure here. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, I haven't defined because I didn't advance my tool. The solid properties are not created here. See, properties is blind. So let's click on the 3D properties. Uh, the support is that the object, aluminum is picked, etc. So this, uh, the properties created right there. You see that? Good. And now let's apply pressure. 
The actual number is doesn't matter. It's just some dummy value, 10 psi. It's just meaningless. Okay, and apply concentrated force there at that location. You see, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll put if you want to, if you want it downward, you would minus. I'll put it upward because you, I want you to be able to see it. You can see that. You want it downward, put it minus. Good. Uh, now, this takes care of the first part of the question. In other words, uh, how can I apply a point load or a load that is distributed not over the whole thing? Now, now the issue of the simply supported, the way I'm going to do it is by the different ways of doing this thing. You may not, there are other ways, some, you know, you might consider it simpler, but I'm going to do it because of the way it was posed to me, I'm going to do it like that. So I'm going to create a, uh, a smooth virtual part on that face. Now, the handler point is the location where you want to later apply the restraint and and uh, and and if load or any load, I don't have any load, but because I did not create a handler point here, did not pick it, it puts at the centroid at this end. Okay, if this guy wants that wants this point to be, you know, the support to be away from that face, you create a point here and select it as the uh, handler point. Now I didn't do that, and you have to do two of them, and you can't do it. Uh, I don't think you can do it uh, at the same time. Uh, so let's do it again. There, the two virtual part there. These are smooth virtual part. I have some videos on smooth versus uh, rigid virtual part, so you can look at it later. And now I'm going to apply a pivot like this. See that to that virtual part. Now you have to put the proper, the one in the proper direction. Uh, for example, if I do a one one, it's going to put a tilted, tilted orientation, etc. I don't want that. Let's go back. Uh, cancel that. This is zero. This is one. Okay, very good. And I have to repeat it again on the other side. Good, same one. And assuming that I didn't forget anything, we're going to run it. I think it's going to work. If you don't like virtual part, do it a different way. Just make the displacement zero upward. Uh, that's it. It ran. There we are. Uh, let me change the rendering here. Uh, this is a dummy fake, you know, one miss of stress because I just put some some numbers there. Okay, so you can animate it. You can actually see that the concentrated po po point shows a big uh, uh, stress concentration here, etc. And this is where the applied load was. Uh, not a big deal. Obviously, this is a bigger force. It pulls it up. Uh, this pressure was down, but the size of the load is smaller. Okay, good luck.